and welcome back to the Dining and Cookbook Club. As you know, we have been cooking our way through the Food 52 Genius Recipes, and let's see what's on the menu for this week. It's a very simple menu this week because of time, but let's go ahead and get started. Our first recipe is the warm squash and chickpea salad with tahini and that's on page 70 in the cookbook if you want to follow along or cook with us at home. So let's see how this tasted. Hmm. I like that it has very fall flavors in it, but the problem is is the butternut squash is squashed. It, it's pretty polarized in there. So and in the instructions, it says to like gently toss it, and I tossed it as gently as I could, but the butternut squash just incinerated, like it just dissolved into the mixture, it almost became as the dressing in itself. It kind of feels like you're eating mush. Looking at this, you would think, I hate to say it, I really hate to say it, dog food? Mm. It reminds me of a gourmet dog food. The taste is really good. I really like the, the tahini with the nuttiness of it, balancing out with the lemon and the olive oil. But because of that butternut squash being so, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't remind me of a salad. In the cookbook, this is the picture that displays the recipe, and as you can see, the butternut squash are supposed to remain intact. And here's my picture. <laughs> now, I think that there's a couple of things that you can do to adjust this recipe because I really do think that the flavor is pretty decent and it's a great fall dish, but because they didn't specify in the directions to cook the butternut squash longer, I feel like so many people at home are just going to just throw this recipe out and not look at it again. But I think there is potential, guys. The butternut squash just needs to be cooked longer. But unfortunately, because the recipe specifies to only cook it for 20 to 25 minutes until soft, and it specifically says until soft, then that's where it really just the recipe just goes in and goes to a crap afterwards because it just becomes mush. I know temperatures vary from each oven, but I would recommend cooking it for at least 30 to, you know, 45 minutes almost, flipping it midway through so that all the edges can be crispy. And what happens when you cook it for longer, the water in the butternut squash, not all of it, but some of it evaporates. And that allows you to have that crispy edge, but also that like soft, chewy inside, like a cookie. So it's really unfortunate because I could see the potential behind this dish, but because of the instructions, it just didn't turn out. And I would actually not pour the dressing over the mixture and then mix it. I would actually smear it on a plate and then top the ingredients on top of it. This would help with the butternut squash not getting squished and squashed. <laughs> uh, pun intended. And that way you have just like a fancier dish in the end and it doesn't look like dog food. Like right now. I really like what it's trying to do for the fall flavors. But overall... I'm going to give this dish a 2 out of 5. I think it could go a little bit further in the ratings if we were to do some tweaking and be able to get that butternut squash really cooked so it's firm. So that when you actually mix it together, then it will be fine. For the recipe rating, I'm going to rate that a 2 out of 3. I'm being a little bit generous here, but... Uh, yeah, it's just that butternut squash, guys. I don't need to repeat myself. It's just, uh, so disappointing. For our second dish today, it is the pasta with Let My Eggplant Go Free Puree, and that's on page 161 in the cookbook. So, let's see how this turned out. Hmm. I really like that, but it's missing something. Hold on. Hmm. I think it's missing some cheese. I mean... With pasta without cheese, am I right? So let's just give this some cheese. Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot. Just gives it a little flavor. Here's what you need to make this dish at home. To get started with this dish, you're going to slice up your eggplant into 1 fourth inch slices, then sprinkle some salt on them. And what this will do is it's going to extract the water that's from them 
and also make them less bitter. And you're going to let the eggplant and the salt sit out for 20 minutes and then after that you're going to take a paper towel and just pat them dry and get the extra salt off. Then slice them up into little cubes and set them aside until we need them. Over low heat, you're going to add a very large saucepan and add olive oil and the garlic to the mixture. And once you hear or and smell the garlic, then you're going to add the eggplant, turn that up to medium high heat, add the thyme to the mixture, but cook that until it becomes about translucent. And once you see it uh, becoming translucent, you're going to add the water to reduce that to medium low heat. And you're going to just let that do its thing and simmer uh, for 20 minutes with the lid on but cracked so the steam can escape. Then in a large pot, you're going to add your enough water for the pound of pasta, bring that to a boil, then add your pasta to the mixture and let it boil for eight to 10 minutes or according to your package directions. You wanna time this uh, about 10 minutes after the eggplant has been cooking to start this so that everything comes out on time. Once the eggplant is finished, use the back of your spoon, a wooden spoon or whatever you have to mash it. And this is gonna be coming kind of like a puree. It's gonna be your sauce for the pasta. Once your pasta is done, you top it off with the eggplant puree along with the basil leaves and the sun-dried tomatoes. And also, as the recipe says, a gild the lily amount of olive oil to serve with, along with some black pepper. And then I recommend some cheese and voila, it's done. I like that the recipe used up both of the ingredients, like a whole eggplant and a whole thing of pasta, but I didn't want to chance putting all the eggplant stuff on the pasta and then not liking it because in this series we've had very little successes so far, which makes me so sad. So instead what I ended up doing was just make a personal serving size to see how yummy it is and then I can scoop on the eggplant stuff later on uh, to assemble it. For the pasta dish, I'm just going to give it a three. I feel like everything I give these days is a three, but honestly, it's just, it's a good, simple pasta. Pop it off with some cheese. It is, it's, it's not too heavy of a pasta dish and it's very light and it, helps you use up some of those veggies that you might have lying around after the summer. I would increase the basil a little bit. They only asked for six leaves. I really like the sun-dried tomatoes in there and that the eggplant is just like a neutral flavor, so it just helps add a little bit more texture to your dish. I don't know if I would particularly make this again, um, but I'm glad that I tried it, and who knows? Who knows what happens in the future? For the recipe portion, I'm going to rate that a three out of three. I will say that overall this book tends to be more of an intermediate cook. For this particular recipe, I would say it's a very friendly beginner one. You just need to know when the garlic is sizzling, which is kind of bizarre in the directions. But uh, other than that, I think it was very clear and easy to follow. And it has pictures. Bonus points. This is a no. This is a yes. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video, and I will see you guys next week. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. What are you guys still doing here? I'll see you guys next week. No, it's fine. Get out of here. It's okay. I promise I'll have dessert for you guys. We're out of time today, okay? I'm sorry. I wanted dessert too.